Well, welcome back to the channel. New video, and I must apologize for how long it's been without one. Um, forces beyond my control. So I, was, I went surfing, uh, really nice waves, really clean. And sadly, I thought it'd be a really good idea if I videoed some of that for you. And naturally, my GoPro just got ripped off the board by the uh, force of the waves, never to be seen again. As a, as a little short one, a little introductory one to get back to going again, um, I do what several people have asked for, which is um, a review of the bike. And uh, I feel that uh, since I've had it now for quite a cons well, I was going to say a considerable time, I've had it uh, several months, and so. I can actually give a kind of informed view of what it's like having done lots of different types of riding from little back roads like this to motorways and longer journeys so uh, a fairly impartial and I hope honest or rather honest and hopefully impartial review Ooh, nicely cleaning the roads actually what you're doing is just putting more gunk in the middle but there we go oh I can see why you're doing it there crikey um, yeah, that's a good idea. Blurred all onto the road. That's an extraordinarily good idea. Um, so review. This is this is my first bike, so I will treat it as such um, and discuss it in terms of a beginner's bike. It's definitely of the sort of cruiser style rather than sports bike. Um, so it just depends on on kind of what you what you want from your bike in terms of a look and a feel whether you want something like that which is a bit more of a sort of um, adventure tourer or something a bit more laid back and I wanted something a bit more laid back so I went for this it's a Kawasaki Vulcan 650 uh, so the 650 refers to the engine size 650 cc it uses the 650 Ninja engine uh, just slightly detuned for a, a bit more sort of grunt down the bottom so you don't get the high revs um, but you do get um, a little bit of chunk down the bottom, which is really, really nice. It's quite manoeuvrable. Um, it is a cruiser after all, but this is probably, well, I don't know, about 230 kilograms or something. Um, and if you compare that to a similar sized Harley Davidson, you're looking at 300. So it is lighter um, and therefore, you know, you can move it about a little bit more. It's a little bit more manoeuvrable. Um, it can go lower in the turns, but not that low uh, because of the, the, the pegs and whatnot. There are drawbacks. Number one, the biggest drawback of this bike is the seat. It's actually really comfortable as you're going along like this. You wouldn't have any problems with it. After you've been, been riding for an hour, your bum is sore. And I mean really sore. It is aching sore. So you can only do about an hour's riding before having to get off, stretch, massage some life back into your buttocks, which uh, can look a little, uh, little interesting on the side of the road. It is genuinely the biggest failing of this bike. You can in America easily, although at some considerable expense, get new seats, get modded seats. And there are lots of sort of videos about that on, on YouTube and whatnot. But in the UK, and this comes to my sort of second bad point. In the UK, mods are very limited and very expensive. Now, that's not a massive problem in, because the, the stock bike is so good. And I'm gonna demonstrate here why the power is so good. So we're in sort of in Okay, so. I will sort of have a look at the, the timing of that, but that was whatever it was, 20 miles an hour to 70 miles an hour in second, maybe a bit of third. This bike is fast. I mean, it is a rocket, a little pocket rocket. You have got to, <laughs> um, you have got to be a little careful with your hand because it will go, and I mean seriously go. Sorry, that was one of the good points. Going back to the bad points of the mods and whatnot. Uh, saw seat position. 
Um, it's good in that you can get the um, extended bars and so you can get you know a bigger guy on I'm six foot three um, and it's it's a comfortable riding position um, nice and upright it's very relaxed you, you're just sitting there twiddling along um, but you do after a very long time get a sore bottom other drawbacks apart from expensive mods um, the light the headlight uh, is is a day running light so it's on all the time but it's not very bright it really isn't very bright at all um, and I went to turn off there but never mind we'll go around again so nighttime riding is uh, something that you should do quite well quite carefully anyway but you don't get a lot of front light with this you can get a light bar but again expensive um, Kawasaki really have put a premium on their mods uh, so you can get a light bar which would really help because uh, it's LED and the bulb in this is not it's standard um, and it's not LED which does make a bit of a difference in terms of uh, the amount of light being produced the only other half bad thing about this bike is the sound that it makes don't knock the stock exhaust because it's been set up really well in terms of the economy you get the power etc so if you mod your exhaust and put something different on uh, be sure to get it sort of reset up but it is not a loud cruiser like exhaust um, that's how could you be on your phone crossing a dual carriageway with dogs? Uh, it does beg a belief what some people will do, to be quite honest. So the sound that you get out of this isn't that punchy. It's not that rich, deep, round sound that you might want if you're buying into the sort of cruiser market, which is a shame um, because it could, you know, just a little bit, and I'm tempted to get the, the Arrow um, exhaust uh, which is legal in Britain, whereas some of the um, mods that people put on uh, in the US are far too loud um, and aren't actually legal in this country. So um, the Arrow one that, that Kawasaki offer, and I reckon it's about 800, which again, you know, you're talking a lot of money here. And so I haven't done it yet because um, it's just too expensive to do. I would like something just a little louder. I mean, if I just, can you hear it? Not really, I'll open the visor, can you hear it? Not much, is the answer to that. The three drawbacks, to summarise. Seat. Comfy for a while, then sore. Light. Good, in that it's on all the time. Bad, it's not very bright. Especially at night time, you'd notice that it's not very bright. And thirdly, the exhaust could be a little bit deeper and richer but then it is only a 650 engine so you can't expect and it's a parallel twin rather than v-twin so it's not it's not your classic harley v-twin it is a parallel twin but triumph managed to get a bit more noise out of their parallels uh, however they are rather bigger engines bigger displacement so um, and the cost of the mods, so number four, cost of the mods. So four things that are tricky about this bike or just slightly not good. The great things about this bike 